Hello, everybody, and welcome to our February webinar uh, titled The Emerging Role of the Chief Project Officer. My name is Dr. T. Wu, and I'll be the presenter today. Just as a web webinar technology check, if you can mute your line, and when you speak, uh, need to speak, you can unmute. That would be great. That would keep the line as clear as possible for everybody. But if it does get noisy, uh, what I will do is mute the line uh, for everybody. And you can still use the chat to ask questions. What I'll do is near the end of the presentation or at the strategic places, I may unmute to see if there are any interaction, any questions. The presentation is designed to be interactive, so feel free to jump in with questions anytime, uh, especially using the chat. Having said that, I'm going to now get started. My name is Dr. T. Wu, and I'm the CEO of PMO Advisory. PMO Advisory is a, I would say, a, one of the premier project management training company, mainly because we focus on this entire spectrum of project management from the very beginning to now the very top of the career ladder, including the chief project officer. Here's a little bit about my experience. I'm not going to speak any more of that. Uh, but other than that, as the CEO of the company, I'm passionate about project management, both from a practitioner's perspective, from an academic perspective, as well as a training perspective. So today, we're going to do a quick introduction on this role, the emerging role of the Chief Project Officer. Um, we'll talk about where it is in action uh, and, frankly, where it is not in action. We'll look at a little bit of the work that's already done in the massive body of work out there, um, but also talking about how we believe it should be shaped and enhanced. And then finally, we'll talk about preparing and becoming a chief project officer. Okay. So let's start with the role, the CX role. For as long as I've been in the industry, uh, in this profession, I should say, since the mid-1990s, we have always been talking about this role of Chief Project Officer, CTO. And frankly, it is, of course, not very popular. Uh, as I look at the landscape today, 2019, I honestly cannot say that there are more CPO roles than there was back in, let's say, 1995. And I think the reality of the situation is that there are many different competing CX roles out there, the most popular being CEO, CIO, CFO, and COO. But I do think that given the emphasis that project management is really taking a central role in a lot of organizations, it is time for organizations to reconsider this. And I do think that the CPO chief project office responsibility of course, also have to adjust. Um, by the way, I apologize. I'm going to actually put the whole call on mute now, as I think there are a little bit too much background noise. So I'll see if necessary. My apologies for the noise. As I mentioned, if it gets too noisy, what we'll do is mute the line. So please continue to use chat to ask questions and we'll unmute at the end of the presentation to address anything you have. So going back to what I was saying, that as organizations put more projects at the center of their strategy, especially as a mechanism to really implement strategy, I think it is the time for organizations and the world in general to consider the chief project officer, and hence the title of today's presentation, The Emerging Role. Let's look at CPO currently in action. So there are, I did a quick LinkedIn search, and I have a premium account on LinkedIn, so I could get to pretty far. And to my surprise, there are about 1,200 people, a little bit less than that, on the LinkedIn um, that has people having the title Chief Project Officer. Most of them, uh, as far as I could tell from the company perspective, are not particularly huge. Um, very few are household name type companies, so I didn't see any, for example, from Apple or Google. Um, I did came across a fairly prominent role by Alicia 
uh, Atkins at the first chief project officer at Telstra, which is, I believe, an Australia company, the largest telecommunication company there. And there, she is responsible to really linking strategy to execution. The strategic moves contribute to having sort of the voice of project in that executive boardroom setting. And I think that is one of the places in which the project plays a very, very strong role. And these roles, according to what I have read and what I have seen, includes accountable for strategic initiative of the organization, often manifest in enterprise project, programs, portfolios, champion cultural change, and then establish key processes in governance, risk management, implementation methodology, project talent management, and other areas. So if you look at the responsibilities of the chief project officer, and my intention, by the way, as a company is to do far more research in this area, so this is just the beginning, is that you do see a strong degree of accountability for managing the strategic initiative. And strategic initiative tend to be also enterprise-wide. They also tend to have a bigger impact on the entire organization. The emerging aspect, because I think in charge and being accountable strategic initiative is somewhat obvious, is the second one. Organizations today realize more and more that in order for them to able to get things done, the right things done, it's actually more than a series of disciplines or skill set. It is more in the area of making sure that the culture of the organization, the unspoken words that influence pretty much everything that happens from decision making to respect for one another. And so the chief project officer, what I believe one of the emerging role, will be the champion for making sure that the culture of the organization actually fit with the goals and objectives in the execution uh, discipline of the organization. And one of the other roles that's already currently there, but I think it will become more prominent over time, is the establishment of key processes, key disciplines, and maybe even at a tactical level, putting the right tools and promotion of certain techniques throughout the organization for making the organization stronger in terms of the execution. So even though the chief project officers um, is an aspiring title, because on LinkedIn, for example, I think there are literally hundreds and thousands of CEOs, and yet only less than 1,200 CPO roles, there are quite a bit of other project executive roles. Now, with the sort of a longitudinal view between 1995 and 2019, I could indeed say quite emphatically that even though CPO role may not actually be more prominent, uh, because I don't really think it is uh, today than, say, 1995, but the other roles, project executive roles, and these roles have various titles. They're not really standardized in the industry or in the profession. You have people sometimes may have a title team lead for PMO. In one of the U.S. organization, team lead uh, for PMO is actually equivalent to executive vice president in another company. You have titles like head of uh, project services, which in some ways is a title I used to have. Um, and you have other roles like chief um, or portfolio managers, portfolio executive, senior project executive. So I did a quick Google search on this Google trend, and you could see that while the role of CPO is pretty steady, it's not very prominent, the project executive in general uh, has a lot more prominence. So for, I guess, encouragement purpose, and not to discourage all of us who want to aspire to be the chief project officer, there is sort of this groundswell of support in organizations that more and more people are getting into this role um, that is building into the chief project officer. So again, if people have a title of you know, executive in charge of PMOs, and PMO itself can stand for project program portfolio, uh, senior project leaders, project directors, 
senior vice president in charge of enterprise project. All of these are, I would say, titles and responsibilities building toward the chief project officers. One of the papers that we examined that we really like is from the International Project Management Association, IPMO. And in that paper, it discussed four specific roles of the chief project officer. And that includes establishing um, the governance and the systems of processes for project program portfolio. It talks about directing all activities of project program portfolio across the organization, performing leadership um, for the project program portfolio um, managers as well as the PMO, and finally supporting the board members in charting or sponsoring projects in the area's responsibility. So this paper, uh, which only came out a couple of years ago by Ryan Carl Wagner, which is an excellent paper, and I think he's the past president of IPMA, in the chairman of the IPMA Council. So this paper is one of the more prominent literature, I would say, in, in this field. But why should organization invest in the creation of PMO, uh, sorry, CPO? And maybe that is one of the reasons that's missing, that doesn't give the rise to this critical role. Here, when we think about it, we, I think, all generally can agree that project management over the past 30 years has become more and more important for organizations. Um, it drives on a number of factors, globalization, regulation, competition, technology itself. And what all of these drivers come together, if you look at it from sort of a perfect storm perspective, is making projects more integrated, involving more people, more business parts of business organization, and sometimes it's even cross business, uh, meaning multiple businesses come together to build something for the industry because it's more than what one company can do. And all of that is really increasing this profile of project as a primary mechanism for getting things done. And if we look forward into the future, there's actually a lot of quite a bit of uncertainty. We are on the cusp of major technolo technological breakthrough, whether it is using fuzzy logic from data analytics, whether it is technology in autonomous vehicles and other intelligent systems. So looking forward in the future, I believe some of the additional roles are or at least enhanced from even the current understanding. And this is a roughly the 10 areas that we see. So take leadership, for example. I think the leadership, building on what IPMA papers was about, is going to probably be even jumping ahead of the traditional project program portfolio. I see that the chief project officer will essentially in some ways become the chief execution officer in charge of executing the business strategy of the organization. And that may very well be even outside the bound of traditional project program portfolio, or what PMI will say, the OPM organization project management. So that's one area. Second, directing activities, absolutely. But I think it's also the ultimate decision maker, the new chief P, uh, project officer, for making the business case and elevating that discussion to the chief uh, ex-officer level, governance. I think one of the um, uh, weakness of the current model, and I think PMI is clearly addressing this by having even a new global standard around the governance, is around how do you make, uh, what I would say, difficult decisions. Right? The idea of governance in some ways comes down to a very simple notion. If everybody agrees, what to do. We really don't need governance. Everybody just go ahead and do it. What governance is really about is how to make unpopular decisions or difficult decisions stick. And as organizations start to compete or continue to compete, this notion of making unpopular ideas work, at least unpopular in some sectors, uh, will be that much more important. And that's why I think governance will actually become a more prominent feature. And I think PMI clearly agree with that, with the new, um, new standard. Discipline spearhead. Project management, program
program management, portfolio management, at the end of the day, is a set of processes and disciplines. And, of course, with the goal of achieving the business result. So from a CTO perspective, they are going to be the champion of that. Number five is making sure the organization do not waste their resources. Um, aligning the company's strategic project objectives with the financial and the strategic resource of the organization. One of my clients, and I'm not going to mention the name, uh, it's not a particularly large company, has about 7,000 people worldwide, um, recently had a conversation and talked about how to streamline and how to really focus their project world. Because they did analysis of their project environment, they found there's almost 3,000 active projects among 7,000 people. Right? Clearly, there is going to be a lot of overlap. Clearly, there's going to be redundancy. And clearly, there will probably be some project that should never happen or start in the first place. With that kind of magnitude, 3,000 projects in an organization of 7,000 people. So alignment and making sure that the discipline of alignment sticks. Others, supporting other executives. Um, I think one of the chief role of the chief project officer is making sure the other chiefs are successful. And as they are indeed major initiative, I'm sure, across the organization, they will play that supportive role. Um, tracking similar projects and gathering lessons learned. You know, I think one of the hallmark of at least most of the companies I have the fortunate experience of working in, and sometimes even playing a leadership role, we are really never very good at capturing the lessons learned and utilizing them. Uh, there are some exclusive, I mean, exclusion to that statement, but in general, we're just not very good. Uh, this is partly because we tend to look forward and not so much backward. And of course, projects are complicated and scenarios are complicated, so lessons may not apply. But I think as the world becomes more competitively driven, this incremental value of gaining and learning lessons from the past will become more important. And I think the CPO will play a leadership role in that. Number eight, this one, enforcing cross-organization collaboration. You know, projects today are just getting more complicated. In the 30s, 1930s, the idea of teamwork started to spearhead itself. And the reason was simple. No one person can no longer have all the skill to require to build something complicated. Well, I think today that notion is going to be far stronger than even back then. Most project enterprise projects today requires a talent pool of people from different backgrounds and sometimes even different perspectives just to find solution that's better. So enforcing cross-organizational collaboration with, let's say, people from the engineering, manufacturing, sales, marketing, or other technical disciplines uh, and bring that together to come up with a better solution. Um, lessons learned we briefly talked about. And then finally, reporting to the board the CEO, and the potential other CXO in the organization. So when we look at the environment, you know, it, we, we could argue that the role of chief project officer should really be there already, uh, given the rising popularity of projects, increasing complexity, growth of the project management professional itself. I remember when I became a PMP, I think around 2003, 2004 timeframe, there were less than 10,000 of us. Today, I think the number is approaching 900,000, right? But the Google trends for the past 15 years actually start showing a decline. So why is it that projects are becoming more prominent, more people are taking on senior project management roles, and you could see that in the titles, and yet, the very top of the ladder where we talk about the chief project officer actually start to decline, or at least not as popular as it used to be. And what I thought about that is one of my answers, I think, is that maybe this role is just very tough. Now, I do realize there is sort of a proliferation of the CX role, which is probably the single biggest reason, meaning the world only needs certain CX role. Right. Um, but having said that, I think it's also preparing professionals like you and myself for that role uh, is also getting quite tough. So here, what we have at PMO Advisory um, is we 
are a training company. We are somewhat one inch wide, as my marketing director likes to say. We are one inch wide because that's all we do, project management. But we also like to think of ourselves as a foot deep, maybe two feet deep. What we like to be is a company for project professional from the very beginning of your career to the topmost level. So here you can see as we build out our companies and its capability, we have a lot of basic training. Uh, most of them are offered to the business enterprise, but some of them are also available in public, CAPM, for example. At some point, you start playing a leadership role, go from team members to analysts to junior project manager to project managers, eventually to senior project managers, and then get into the world of program management. A program for those who on the call may not um, fully uh, comprehend, PMI defines program as a collection of related projects. And I will add the word highly related project, in which by applying the program management discipline, you can derive value and benefits you otherwise wouldn't have. I, mean, I will even go a step further. A true program to me is when all the components, projects within there, are essential. So failure of a small project in a program that may have 10 projects actually will detrimentally hinder the overall program success. Beyond that, you have portfolio. Portfolios are a collection of related projects that usually align toward a common strategic objective. Uh, it could be other alignments as well. But at the very top is where I think the chief project officer ultimately will come out to the top. Not only are they looking at portfolios and making that kind of investment decisions at the board level with the other CXOs, but they're also responsible for establishing that culture required to make the hard choices in the difficult task of implementation. So in some ways, this is our conceptual map that guides most of the work in PMO advisory. So pause here for a second. Um, are there any questions of what I said so far? And maybe I'll unmute for a second. Just Hi, everybody. Are there any questions that people want to jump in at this point? Can we get more explanation? Sorry, it's a little too noisy out there, so um, I'll keep on going. And uh, if there are no questions, we may actually end up uh, end the session earlier, which is okay. But feel free to jump in with questions. So the next part, what we want to look at is what are the what we consider to be some of the chief prerequisites to become the project executive. And I think that's what may be sort of stopping the world from having more CPO. So what are the five reasons? One, project leadership. Right? This is understanding the, both the challenges and opportunities of project management, including selection and application of various methodologies in tackling obstacles. One of the things, for example, from PMO advisory perspective we see is a number of our clients often come to us with trying to figure out what is the best approach to actually use to tackle their project world. Uh, should it be waterfall? Should it be agile? Should it be scrum? Should it be some kind of combination and blending? All of that, of course, requires very, very strong leadership to push through, uh, whether it is to go to a hybrid methodology or develop internal. Two, business acumen. Chief project officers, well, actually, let's go back a little bit. When this role project manager first emerged in the 50s and the 60s, 1950s and 1960s, it was really designed around a general manager role, meaning that the chief, the project manager does indeed become a general manager for the overall organization. So going back to that route, having a strong business acumen having this understanding what the organization needs, not only just about the business, but the overall industry. That is going to be pivotal in this new role as the chief project officer. So they must have that strong understanding of the business, not just 
in managing project, managing resources, the 10 knowledge areas in project management. The third, profit and loss responsibility. I remember when PMI put together the standard group for the fourth edition of the Standard for Portfolio Management, which I was a core team member. One of the things that the chair looked for was having that P&L responsibility. Having the P&L responsibility is crucial for the emergence of the chief project officer because they are going to be accountable with strong financial fiduciary duty for the organization. And people who have that experience, who has the pain of trying to balance the books and make the numbers, so to speak, uh, would be incredibly important. Actually, that is a lot of beep. Um, Sandra, I am sorry. I don't know how to clear. I don't know how to change the beat. Let me just give me one second and let me see. Because I hear, but I didn't realize everybody else hearing it too. I am sorry. I don't have any obvious setting on my part that could stop the beep. So I hope people don't fall in and out too much. So PML responsibility is going to be very, very critical, I think, as a prerequisite to the chief project officer. Lastly, uh, next number four is the strategic awareness. This strategic awareness is making sure doing the right things consistently, repeatedly, and really with the ever-growing number of projects and making sure that they are going in the right direction critical direction. And this set of skills is really actually very hard to come by, meaning that chief project officer, for them to rise to that level, they need to have the visibility and the understanding of the other chiefs. In some ways, you really don't become a chief and have that kind of understanding and visibility until you do become a chief. So it does become a chicken and egg question. And what I do envision is that it's actually indeed possible some of the earlier chief project officers come from the other CX roles, meaning chief operating officer, chief information officer, or chief technology officer. Five, organization savviness. The organization savviness is the ability to work within the organization. So developing a ability to work within the political organization, which the whole organization tends to be, um, that would be quite critical. So I honestly don't know why is it beeping that much. I'm sorry, Kay, I cannot fix it. I'm trying to, but I can't see, I don't see anything that allows me to mute the beep as well. So to be honest, this may very well be the last time we actually use this technology for a webinar because we are moving from um, using JoinMe to Zoom. But for this meeting, we still use Zoom because that's what we have scheduled on internal system. But even before, this wasn't that bad. Um, I am really sorry. I don't know how to change the sound. Okay. Um, I do think there may very well be people dropping the call. Okay, so let's go back to leadership. I see there's a question on leadership. Can a number of you are asking more about leadership? Can you be specific on what kind of leadership questions? Okay. So I'll tell you my view on leadership uh, as I wait for other people to put in the questions. The one of the chief challenges of being a project executive is really the need to make difficult decisions. Um, and at the enterprise level, especially if you are a chief project officer um, making decisions around enterprise projects, there is no easy task. An organization, unless it's infinitely rich and have infinite resources, essentially becomes a choice. When you do project X, you are essentially saying we're not going to do project Y. So making those tough decisions does require 
a strong leadership to do so. My experience in this actually varies quite a bit. In my in the late 90s, I was actually at Accenture at the time, and I worked on some of the major projects at AT&T. And for those of you who know AT&T, um, they're a telephone telecom company in the United States. And AT&T at one point is the single most widely held stock uh, in all of the United States in the 90s. The challenge was the AT&T at that point is they wanted to connect the last mile, um, delivering long distance using the what Michael Armstrong, CEO at the time, purchased using a lot of the um, coaxial cable from the cable side. He spent about $100 billion across multiple acquisitions to do that. What I realized in my experience working on that project is the need to make fairly rapid decisions and pushing those decisions through requires leadership that most organizations may not be equipped with. Because if you think about it, project has a very large project, has a very high burn rate. And that burn rate um, is going to be there whether you make the decision or not. And what we've seen, at least on that project, and there's many other examples in my career that have seen that, organization culture is just not equipped to make decisions that requires a fast turnaround. And depending how you even define fast turnaround, today, for example, in the agile world, a fast turnaround can be measured in minutes and maybe hours. But even back then when it was measuring days and weeks, the decision process and that major AT&T program was so slow that it was fatal. For those of you who are in the United States, you probably know the AT&T that we have today, uh, the AT&T long distance company, or sorry, the wireless carrier, for example, today, that's not the AT&T of the 1990s. That company actually died. One of the baby Bell, I think it was Bay Bell South, in 2014 bought the name of AT&T and rebranded itself. So that is an example in which the leadership have to understand that the criticality of the project, the burn rate of the project, the speed to the market, and that is a systemic and cultural change. So in project management, we talk about making trade-off, and that's one of the big challenging projects. At the CPO level, this trade-off is not a technological or a micro trade-off. This is about what the organization is going to dedicate itself over the coming years. And the leadership required is not only to analyze the data, understand the data, communicate the data, champion the change, but also it is about setting out what the organization is not doing and establishing the right governance to make that kind of decision. So that's how I see the leadership. From a big challenge perspective, aside from the politics, et cetera, is helping the organization make those tough decisions. And once you make the tough decision, from the execution perspective, you also have to stick to it for it to execute. Because imagine you commit $100 million to do a project, and then half a year later you decide to change course. That's not going to be very helpful. So that's what I see. So, okay, you have a great question. Is there any leadership advice for implementing a portfolio strategy after realizing the uh, leadership has failed in program project management? I think that's a very broad question, and I could think of many advice for doing so. Um, so probably for detail, if you want, later I'll have my email. Feel free to communicate with me. But as a sort of some quick general statement, I think the more that the CPO can base its analysis on data, on the what works in the organization and what doesn't work, it makes it far more compelling to convince other executives to follow along. And if you are asking, as I'm seeing, to turn around portfolio when is not thought of until the contract has failed, one of the chief role of the chief project officer is around risk mitigation, risk management, understanding what are the um, opportunities and the, the, the threats. So ideally, of course, you set
save things before they completely fail. So that's more of a turnaround than a rescue. One thing I learned in managing large projects and for a large organization is bad news doesn't get better with time. You know, so in this case, it's almost going back to 101 on management side. If you know something is wrong, raise it early. Raise the awareness. Manage the expectation. Get the right people to be on your side. So there could be some politically maneuvering that you have to do. So instead of announcing it and surprise everybody in open meeting, make sure you have a couple of key allies. But ultimately, deal and confront with these challenges early rather than later. And be very factual. Whatever the CPO have to do, ultimately, shouldn't be based on self-interest, politics. Ultimately, it needs to be based on facts and data and the resources. I would say one of the other challenges that I know as a, uh, uh, the head of project services I confront is I'm often asked to do a lot more than I have the resource to do. And there's no hiding it. If I don't have enough resources, you know, in classes I often joke about uh, if, if somebody wants a pitcher of freshly squeezed orange juice, well, somebody has to give you the oranges. Right? If you give me one orange, it doesn't matter how hard, how well, how skillful I can squeeze that orange, you're only getting a cup. You're not getting a whole pitcher. And that analogy applies. So get ahead of the problem. Be as transparent. Be vocal. Build alliances. Get others to see your way and convince them using data and facts. And one thing I should have to say is as a chief project officer, chances are you also cannot be, uh, uh, you have to stand as a mutual party. Uh, this is because you're probably going to be the arbiter among the other Cs on what their respective role is going to be. CMO, chief marketing officer, I'm sure have their agenda, as well as the COO, CFO, and everybody else. So to be a credible CPO over time, you have to be that neutral party and find a solution. So on this slide, uh, I'm going to go a little bit quicker. I'm slightly behind schedule. So on this slide, you see that these are some of the areas that I think the CPO need to develop. And I think it's because these areas are underdeveloped over the last 20, some 30 years, that this role is sort of being held back. Um, so you can see, and some of them are fairly obvious. So I'm sure many of you have worked in more one or more of these areas, um, clearly. So how to make strategy work, the art of the creating effective strategy, governance, leading benefit realization. And I often get this question from the CXOs. No, the essential scenarios like T, we somehow don't seem to get the results, you know, that we really strive to achieve. So we start out with this lofty set of goals, and we end up achieving something smaller. How do we change that? PMI's answer to that is actually quite simple. Hold people accountable to the business case. If there is a business case and the business case dictate these X benefits, well, Hold them accountable. At the end of the project or program or portfolio, were these business case um, uh, targets, uh, accomplishments actually achieved? So this is where you need business realization management. Uh, others found scorecard, champion transformation change, instituting effective project management information system so you could have knowledge sharing, lessons learned. Others, financial management, risk, understanding and motivating teams, championing change to effective project leadership, building a world-class PMO. PMO, I think, is going to be central to this role of the chief project officer. Because after all, projects come and go. Projects, by definition, are temporary. Programs are temporary. Even portfolio will be merged and realigned and re-optimized. So while not the traditional sense of you know, beginning and end, they do, in some ways, have their own natural cycle, as we explain in the fourth chapter, uh, fourth edition of the Portfolio Management Standard. But PMOs are here to stay. Uh, the world doesn't have a great reputation and tenure around PMO today. They usually last somewhere between five years or so. But I think with that emergence of the CPO, the PMO itself will also get a boost. Um, others, agile approach. 
I think most of us today, at least I hope we're not, dogmatic about what we have to use. Often, there is going to be a plethora of choices. And our challenge is in finding the best among those choices for the environment that we're in. Uh, there's the right uh, metrics. You know, what gets measured gets improved. In this case, the metrics could be key performance metrics for the organization, not just for the project environment. So these are some of the skills. We identified roughly 20 of them. And by the way, later as a sort of an ask from us to you, if you're interested, you could help us filling out a survey too with your view on certain things. So I'll get to that. But these are listed there. Okay. Oh, actually, that, that is the next slide. So I could explain any one of those uh, uh, items before here in greater purpose, uh, greater detail. So feel free to come back to here. But what I'm going to do is just finish the slide and then come jump a little bit. So as I mentioned, we are going to spearhead the creation of some of these uh, training, and we already started doing that. But we'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have any particular views, feel free, and I'll make this video available so you'll have this link, and you can fill out the survey. By the way, we have a full-length article written about this. So everything I talked about today has a fairly big paper. Let me see where I put it. Um, on our website. So this is the website, and you can see it covers a lot greater detail. Uh, I didn't really want to read from the paper. And the 10 items, the 20 items that we talked about are all listed here, what we believe to be the most important. Now, I have to say I strong emphasis on what we believe. We have done study, we have spoken with people, but still a small collection of people and a relatively small number of research because there aren't that many in this area. If you are interested, feel free to fill out the survey, as I mentioned earlier, and jump in with your view. So this is a full-length paper for those people that's interested, and the webinar is really just a summary. So here you could access the paper. Okay. Uh, one key note about the short survey, it can be anonymous, but if you want a copy of the results or you want to contribute, then you have to give us your contact information. Otherwise, we, of course, cannot contact you. Um, let me read one question here. That's a really good question. So the question is, I'm seeing in the IT service industry more PMOs being vetted under the head of engineering, especially with the evolution of DevOps and the agile organization. Are you seeing this as well, and do you foresee impacting the viability of the CPO role? So I think I have to answer the question on a couple of different levels. One, I think as project itself become a more popular mechanism. And when I say project, there's all permutations, traditional waterfall project, agile project. Sometimes it could just be activities that organizations do, but you want to apply that project management discipline. So let's call it quasi-projects. Um, all of these are typically evolving to work with the business unit that makes the most use of it. So Clearly, information technology is one of the biggest proponent of project management. So in the DevOps, Agile transformation, absolutely. And in those respective functional role or product areas, because it could be a product area as well, clearly there will be the emergence of somebody in charge of projects under that area. So that's one level answer, and yes, there will be project executive, let's say, overseeing the IT projects, IT portfolio, and being, let's say, the CPO for that IT organization or DevOps operations. The chief project officer that we're largely talking about, though, is more in charge of at the broader level, let's say at least at a business unit level, possibly divisional, possibly uh, and preferably at the enterprise. So their responsibility is really not just one area, let's say DevOps, but rather DevOps working with the rest of the organization, let's say the sales or the marketing, and the new product development with R&D or manufacturing that elevates the project at that entire organization level. Now, of course, it depends on your organization. If you're working a conglomerate, 
CEO of a business division could be a very, very powerful CEO uh, in its own right. And ironically, in those multiple conglomerates, the CEO of the major enterprise actually may have a lesser role because they're far removed from day-to-day -day execution. But the role of the CPO is essentially what I envision sitting at that board level, whether it is at the divisional level, business unit level, or at the enterprise level, working with other CXOs. So probably more than just a DevOps itself. Um, covering the um, just the slide so you have all the information and we'll come back and add, address questions, is claiming the one PDU. Um, this presentation will earn you one strategic PDU. So if they ask for the sub-information, it's one strategic, zero technical, zero leadership. Because we're talking about really the, I would say, future of the project management world in the roles that's involved in. So make sure that this information is there. And again, we'll make the webinar recording available so you can listen to it and you can have this available. Um, just going to my contact information, I know a couple of you may have excellent questions. Feel free to contact me or connect with me on LinkedIn so you have my information here. Now, with that said, I'm going to now go back to the presentation and address more questions. So if you have more questions, feel free to use the chat and type that up. I'll center on this slide for a second. Are there any additional questions, your thoughts about the Chief Project Officer? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have rushed through. I was thinking there may be more questions, so I rushed through it just to cover all, everything and come back to the particular topics. Okay. Well, if you don't have any questions, um, feel free. You have my contact information. But as I mentioned, I would love to have your help to help us develop more understanding of this area. Uh, PMO advisory, as I mentioned, our aspiration, you know, what is the purpose of our existence, is to provide this project management training as well as consulting across this broad spectrum. We essentially want you to think about us at every step of your career plan in this project management world, whether you're at the entry level want to develop a basic understanding, or all the way to the project program portfolio level. And just as a small pitch, I'm also on the PMI Global Risk Team, and we are actually going to release a global standard for project program portfolio risk management coming up in April, so approximately a little bit more than a month from now. So look for that. Um, the PD. I could make the presentation available, so if you want it, you could email it to me. I generally do not make the PDF available, uh, mostly because it does contain some proprietary information, um, but on a selective basis, I'd be happy to release it. But again, the video is now being recorded, and we will make the video available. Um, can you paste the survey link in the chat, please? Sure, I'll do that. Um, good suggestion. Are there any other questions as I'm doing this on the chat? Okay, I'm going to unmute for a second. Hopefully it's not very noisy so people have a chance to interact. Okay, oh good, it's not very noisy. So do you have any questions that you want to jump in uh, and I could do my best to answer? Yes, um, my, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, my name is Claudia Gale, and uh, I had participated in the the last um, uh, webinar, and uh, but I had missed about 15 minutes, and I went back to your recording, and um, I was unable to get through to put in for my um, the credit for the first uh, the webinar in Jan January. Oh, okay. Um, and I called in as well, and they gave me a link, and it still it didn't work. My apologies. Um, can you do me a favor? Send me an email here. I'll send you some other instructions. See if this works. Yeah, because they gave it. It was T, it's at TW at um, PMOadvisory dot com. That's correct. Okay, so I'll um, uh, contact you again and okay. uh, see if it works this time. Because I would like to get credit for this one and the previous one in January. 
Okay, that would be good. I mean, it should work. Um, we have a lot of people reporting, so I don't know why that it doesn't work for some individual. I do, we do get here and there some people having trouble. So okay. Some of I don't truly know the answer. Okay. All right. Um, we'll do our best to help you. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Are there any other questions before I stop the recording? I'm going to stop. Hey, I have a question. Yes. Yeah, so I'm trying to get the PFMP certification. Do you think that before getting PFMP, I should get the PGMP and PNP? You know, that's a that's a good question. That's actually a question in some ways for the next month webinar. Um, well, PMI looks at all the certification as distinct. So there is no dependencies or codependencies among any of the certification. My advice people are pretty simple. If you are looking to develop stronger technical project management program management skills, then PGMP makes more sense after attaining PMP. If your interest is to be more of a business executive in the sense of having more strategic view and even toward the road of becoming a CPO, uh, Chief Project Officer, then PFMP to me makes more sense. Because PFMP really puts you, somewhat remove you from more of the traditional project management roles and responsibility and propel you to have that more of the business acumen around the governance, strategic alignment, performance, and managing of business cycles. So those are more at a business level. So PFMP is suitable for people who have aspiration to move more on that managerial and the executive track versus sort of the technical track, uh, which I think program management as we have it today is sort of the top of that ladder. That's how I see it. Just, Thank you. Just keep, in mind, just keep okay. in mind that your resource um, study is going to take you back to PMP and program management resources. So you do have to have an understanding of the PMP um, PMBOK in the program management uh, to to really be successful at the PFMP. Absolutely, and I, I think that's right. At the execution level, to do the capability capacity analysis, understand what is required and what do you have, of course, at that point, you need to have, including the technical knowledge of the project and the program, so you could resource it correctly. Um, so, yes, that's absolutely true. Thanks, and, and by the way, people often do pursue, there's more and more people with this PPMP, Project Program Portfolio. So when I became PPMP, it was pretty rare. I think I was actually one of the first to attain that. Um, I'm not the first. I know there are a couple of people who beat me to it. But I was the eighth person to finish portfolio. So in that sense, only possibly eight other people could beat me to it. But... Um, today, I don't know what the number is. If I have to guess, I would say probably hover, hovering around 200 people probably have PPMP certification. Uh, and PMO advisors help a number of them, so we know this industry pretty well, given we do program management, portfolio management training uh, to, to um, a lot of people. So, Excellent question. Um, so, okay, uh, in terms of webinar, we have a monthly webinar, so generally around the third Wednesday of the month. Today is actually third for Wednesday of the month. We tend to do a webinar, and our topic jumps around. Today we are sort of leaping into the emerging role of the chief project officer, sort of the topmost role. I think the next month we have it around program management. Some months we may talk about the sort of the more uh, general topic, general interest around the project management and even CAPM. So we do jump around a little bit, but it is. Um, as I mentioned, my company's aspiration is to cover this entire field. If there are no further questions, oh, okay. Um, ah, that would be a great topic, I agree. You know, any of these topics, turnaround, poorly performing portfolio, send me email those. We always collect ideas and love Q&A. I'm going to stop the um, recording now, um, but people feel free.